In the name of the Father, and of the Son, and of the Holy Spirit. Amen. The Lord be with you. And with your spirit. A very warm welcome to all of the, our parishioners and visitors today as we celebrate the second Sunday of Lent, and especially those who will be joining us spiritually in their homes, who will be watching and praying with us through this recording. We reach out to you and wish you a, a, a prayerful Lent as well. Just as we experienced with the season of Advent, uh, right now during Lent, the Diocese of San Diego has given us permission to receive general absolution, uh, which is the same exact forgiveness that is offered to us in the sacraments of confession. I know it can feel a little awkward, and it can feel a little difficult to receive it because we're so used to the necessity of confessing our sins it feels weird to receive that forgiveness when we're not speaking and confessing out loud. However, this is a very real thing that the church offers. It's very powerful. In times of difficulty such as these, where we allow Jesus to come to us and meet us where we're at. <clears throat> and so those of us gathered here today who would like to receive sacramental forgiveness, please bow our heads as we pray together. I confess to Almighty God and to you, my brothers and sisters, that I have greatly sinned in my thoughts and in my words, in what I have done and what I have failed to do, through my fault, through my fault, through my most grievous fault. Therefore, I ask Blessed Mary, ever Virgin, all the angels and saints, and you, my brothers and sisters, to pray for me to the Lord our God. God the Father does not wish the sinner to die, but to turn back to him and live. He loved us first and sent his Son into the world to be its Savior. May he show you his merciful love and give you peace. And I absolve you from your sins in the name of the Father, and of the Son, and of the Holy Spirit. Amen. Let us pray. O oh God, who have commanded us to listen to your beloved Son, be pleased, we pray, to nourish us inwardly by your word, that with spiritual sight made pure, we may rejoice to behold your glory. Through our Lord Jesus Christ, your Son, who lives and reigns with you in the unity of the Holy Spirit, one God forever and ever. Amen. A reading from the book of Genesis. God put Abraham to the test. He called to him, Abraham, here I am, he replied. Then God said, take your son Isaac, your only one, whom you love, and go to the land of Moriah. There you shall offer him as a holocaust on a height that I will point out to you. When they came to the place of which God had told them, Abraham built an altar there and arranged a wood on it. Then he reached out and took the knife to slaughter his son. But the Lord's messenger called to him from heaven, Abraham, Abraham, here I am, he answered. Do not lay your hand on the boy, said the messenger. Do not do the least, do not do the least thing to him. I know how devoted you are to God, since you did not withhold from me your own beloved son. As Abraham looked about, he spied a ram caught by its horns in the thicket. So he went and took the ram and offered it up as a holocaust in place of his son. Again, the Lord's messenger called to Abraham from heaven and said, I swear by myself, declares the Lord, that because you acted as you did 
in not withholding from me your beloved son, I will bless you abundantly and make your descendants as countless as the stars of the sky and the sands of the seashore. Your descendants shall take possession of the gates of their enemies, and in your descendants all the nations of the earth shall find blessing. All this because you obeyed my command. The word of the Lord. I will walk before the Lord in the land of the living. I will walk before the Lord in the land of the living. I believed even when I said, I am greatly afflicted. Precious in the eyes of the Lord is the death of his faithful ones. I will walk before the Lord in the land of the living. O Lord, I am your servant. I am your servant, the son of your handmaid. You have loosed my bonds. To you will I offer sacrifice of thanksgiving, and I will call upon the name of the Lord. I will walk before the Lord in the land of the living. My vows to the Lord I will pay in the presence of all his people, in the courts of the house of the Lord, in your midst, of Jerusalem. I will walk before the Lord in the land of the living. The Lord be with you. And with your spirit. A reading from the Holy Gospel according to Mark. Jesus took Peter, James, and John and led them up a high mountain apart by themselves. And he was transfigured before them, and his clothes became dazzling white, such as no fuller on earth could bleach them. Then Elijah appeared to them along with Moses, and they were conversing with Jesus. Then Peter said to Jesus in reply, Rabbi, it is good that we are here. Let us make three tents, one for you, one for Moses, and one for Elijah. He hardly knew what to say, they were so terrified. Then a cloud came, casting a shadow over them. From the cloud came a voice. This is my beloved son. Listen to him. Suddenly looking around, they no longer saw anyone but Jesus alone with them. As they were coming down from the mountain, he charged them, not to relate what they had seen to anyone, except when the Son of Man had risen from the dead. So they kept the matter to themselves, questioning what rising from the dead meant. The Gospel of the Lord. Praise Praise I had a very non-traditional uh, path to finally graduating from college. <laughs> probably it wasn't, let's just say it probably wasn't the path my parents had intended that they'd see, but I ended up graduating at least. <laughs> uh, dropped out of UC Santa Barbara after three years, went to community college in my fourth year down at Grossmont, and then ended up going to Franciscan University of Steubenville. So I went to UCSB and Franciscan University of Steubenville two very different schools, kind of very different dynamics at each one. Uh, but when I was at Franciscan University of Steubenville, I got involved with uh, an amazing mission trip that I went on the first year and then led the next. And uh, it was to Chicago. And a part, the second year, a part of 
it was a different responsibility as leading the mission team. Uh, your mission was your team, and the team's mission was the people you'd encounter. So you're trying to prepare them to minister to the men on the streets of Chicago. And so part of that is we'd pray together, and we'd pray a lot, and that was my last year there. I was about to finally graduate from college, you know, and um, also I was in a discernment program, so I was considering, you know, trying to pray a lot and figure out, was I going to go to seminary, or was I going to end up pursuing this girl that I never thought I'd ever meet in my life, and so it was a really intense time. <laughs> um, and we'd pray for each other, and whenever we'd be praying for each other, if any scripture verses came to our mind or um, any images while we were praying and interceding for the other person, we'd share it with them. And this one guy, every time he'd pray for me, he would tell me afterwards, he's like, yeah, man, you know, I got the transfiguration again. And he kept getting it. And he kept telling me over and over that he kept thinking about the transfiguration when he prayed for me. But the transfiguration at that time, I had no idea what this gospel meant. It was always the most confusing one to me. I'm like, I don't even understand what that means. And so he's like, but you know what that means, man. I'm like, I don't know what it means. What does it mean? <laughs> and there was a sister that I was friends with, and she even wrote that in her card when I graduated. It was, I believe, this time of here was the transfiguration for you. And I was like, even you're, you're even telling me this too, you know? But finally, it was through that whole experience that I kind of came to understand it in a very personal way. And I think sometimes there's scriptures in all of our lives where maybe we just don't understand it. And maybe we've been hearing it over and over and we can tell you the story of what happened. We just don't really understand the mystery of it. But something powerful happens when the Holy Spirit shows us and teaches us in a very personal way what it means. And this is actually went, went from being a scripture that I didn't understand to being one of my favorite scriptures through the process of that. Because Peter and James and John, in that moment on the mountain, they experienced the glory of God. They experienced Jesus radiant as if it was heaven. It was this, did Moses and Elijah show up? It was this beautiful moment that was so powerful that Peter didn't want to leave. But then what happens after? They go down the mountain they accompany Jesus through the passion. And I think in our lives, God gives us these moments where we feel his presence so powerfully. And to soak that experience up and to receive that experience. But a lot of times the next season is one of, in the same way of imitating Jesus. That we have these moments of the foretaste of heaven, of joy, of beauty, of radiance, of the presence of God very clearly, maybe in our families or friendships or relationships, these moments of joy. And sometimes God gives us those, experience, those experiences so that we can persevere through the next season of difficulty, through the next season of perhaps a little taste of our own passion to strive to allow Jesus into those moments but those moments of glory those moments that are so rich I absolutely love weddings and I'm sure that's something you may have heard me say before <laughs> but I, I love them and you know perhaps that's because I've been a groomsman eight times and like a best man three I always say at every rehearsal Always a groomsman, never the groom. <laughs> but it's such a joyful moment, and I'm sure for those of you who are married, or those perhaps who aren't, but have gone to friends and family's weddings, that moment where two sides come together, that moment, that one week, where the people you love the most from every part of your life are in one place, gathered together, enjoy all these people together that's such a moment of joy and God's presence and community to me that's a foretaste of that communion we'll share with each other in heaven a lot of our family and friends are scattered throughout the world even 
throughout the country, and right now, especially in COVID, maybe feeling a spiritual and physical distance from some of the people we love the most. When I think back on my ordination day, it was that same experience of a wedding. Friends of mine from childhood, friends of mine from high school, friends of mine from Santa Barbara, friends of mine from Ohio, friends from the East Coast when I was out there at Franciscan University of Steubenville, friends from seminary who dropped out and got married and brought their kids, friends of mine who were priests that I studied with. It was this cross-section of like all the people, and I turn around in the middle of the ceremony after they call my name, and there's a moment where you look out and seeing the people who were sitting next to each other, and I'm so excited that those two people are sitting next to each other. They don't know each other, but they're going to get to know each other, hopefully, and have a conversation. And it was this tapestry of the body of Christ. But I think whatever those joyful moments are, now more than ever, even if we're looking back on our life, even if it's not something that's happening now, the power of memory, the power of memory is so alive in our scripture, in our faith tradition. But for us to look back on our lives, those moments of pure joy and community, to look for those human experiences with other people, those moments of joy, and to look for those experiences that we've had spiritually, where we felt the presence of God so powerfully in our life, where maybe we were in a difficult place and time, and in a very vulnerable, raw moment of prayer, maybe with tears, maybe feeling like we were on the ropes. We didn't know how we could move forward, but experiencing God's presence Jesus' presence with us in the midst of that struggle, the way he helped us overcome it in the past, that those moments are real, and that God was there. He has helped us to overcome. He will help us to overcome again. And to receive those moments so that when we do experience those moments of passion, those moments of death, that we can allow those moments of the glory of God that we've experienced concretely here on earth to give us hope and perseverance in the midst of those struggles and difficulties. I believe in one God, the Father Almighty, maker of heaven and earth, of all things visible and invisible. I believe in one Lord Jesus Christ, the only begotten Son of God, born of the Father before all ages, God from God, light from light, true God from true God, God not made, consubstantial with the Father, through him all things were made. For us men and for our salvation, he came down from heaven. By the Holy Spirit was incarnate of the Virgin Mary and became man. For our sake he was crucified under Pontius Pilate. He suffered death and was buried and rose again on the third day. In accordance with the scriptures, he ascended into heaven and is seated at the right hand of the Father. He will come again in glory to judge the living and the dead. And his kingdom will have no end. I believe in the Holy Spirit, the Lord, the giver of life, who proceeds from the Father and the Son, who with the Father and the Son is adored and glorified, who has spoken through the prophets. And I believe in one holy Catholic apostolic church. I confess one baptism for the forgiveness of sins. I look forward to the resurrection of the dead and the life of the world to come. Amen. Now let us turn and offer to God our hearts and our prayers. For our Holy Father, Pope Francis, as he journeys to the ancient Christian cities of Iraq, 
to stand with the church of that nation which has suffered so much persecution for adhering to the gospel. We pray to the Lord. Lord hear our prayer. For leaders of industry, may they be conscientious stewards of the earth's resources. We pray to the Lord. Lord hear our prayer. For all who are experiencing crisis of faith, may they be inspired by Abraham's witness of faith in God. We pray to the Lord. Lord hear our prayer. For all the sick, especially the seriously ill in our parish, Enrique Monteverde, Ruben Garcia, Ilya Cruz Chavez, Michael Hansen, Alex Yu, Linda Rodriguez, and all those named on our prayer wall, we pray to the Lord. Lord hear our prayer. For those who have died, especially the recently deceased in our parish, Hector Mendez, Paula Chavez, Jonathan Flores, Juana Chariz, David De La Cruz, Aurora Ibarra, Ochoa, Father John Howard, Helen Robinson, Andrea Peria, and all those affected by the pandemic, and all those named on our prayer wall, we pray to the Lord. Lord, Lord, Lord. Lord. For the repose of the soul of Joyce Johns, for whom this Mass is being offered, we pray to the Lord. Lord hear our prayer. Heavenly Father, we ask that you hear and answer these and all the prayers we hold in the silence of our hearts. Through Christ our Lord. Amen. Amen. and sisters, that my sacrifice and yours may be acceptable to God, the Almighty Father. May this sacrifice, O Lord, we pray, cleanse us of our faults and sanctify your faithful in body and mind for the celebration of the Paschal festivities. Through Christ our Lord. Amen. The Lord be with you. And with your spirit. Lift up your heart. Let us give thanks to the Lord our God. It is right and just. It is truly right and just, our duty and our salvation always and everywhere, to give you thanks. Lord, Holy Father, almighty and eternal God, through Christ our Lord. For after he had told the disciples of his coming death, on the holy mountain, he manifested to them his glory to show, even by the testimony of the law and the prophets, that the passion leads to the glory of the resurrection. And so with the powers of heaven, we worship you constantly on earth, and before your majesty, without end, we acclaim. Holy, 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 holy Lord, 
God of hosts. Heaven and earth are full of your glory. O Son in the highest, blessed is he who comes in the name of the Lord. O Son in the highest. You are indeed holy, O Lord, the fount of all holiness. Make holy, therefore, these gifts, we pray, by sending down your Spirit upon them like the dewfall, so that they may become for us the body and blood of our Lord Jesus Christ. At the time he was betrayed and entered willingly into his passion, he took bread and, giving thanks, broke it gave it to his disciples, saying, Take this, all of you, and eat of it, for this is my body, which will be given up for you. In a similar way, when supper was ended, he took the chalice, and once more giving thanks, he gave it to his disciples, saying, Take this, all of you, and drink from it, for this is the chalice of my blood, the blood of the new and eternal covenant, which will be poured out for you and for many, for the forgiveness of sins. Do this in memory of me. The mystery of faith, when we eat this bread and drink this cup, we proclaim your death, O Lord, until you come again. Therefore, as we celebrate the memorial of his death and resurrection, we offer you, Lord, the bread of life and the chalice of salvation, giving thanks that you have held us worthy to be in your presence and minister to you. Humbly we pray that partaking of the body and blood of Christ, we may be gathered into one by the Holy Spirit. Remember, Lord, your church spread throughout the world and bring her to the fullness of charity, together with Francis, our Pope, Robert, our Bishop, John and Ramon, his assistant bishops, and all the clergy. Remember also our brothers and sisters who have fallen asleep in the hope of the resurrection, and all who have died in your mercy, welcome them into the light of your face. Have mercy on us all, we pray, that with the Blessed Virgin Mary, Mother of God, with Blessed Joseph, her spouse, with the Blessed Apostles, with St. Mark, San Diego, and all the saints who have pleased you throughout the ages, we may merit to be co-heirs to eternal life, and may praise and glorify you through your Son, Jesus Christ. Through him and with him and in him, O God, Almighty Father, in the unity of the Holy Spirit, all glory and honor is yours forever and ever. Amen. At the Savior's command and formed by divine teaching, we dare to say, Our, Our Father, who art in heaven, hallowed be thy name. Thy kingdom come, thy will be done, on earth as it is in heaven. Give us this day our daily bread, and forgive us our trespasses, as we forgive those who trespass against us. And lead us not into temptation, but deliver us from evil. Deliver us, Lord, we pray, from every evil. Graciously grant peace in our days, that by the help of your mercy we may be always free from sin and 
and safe from all distress as we await the blessed hope and the coming of our Savior, Jesus Christ. For the kingdom, the power, and the glory of Jesus is now and forever. Lord Jesus Christ, who said to your apostles, Peace I leave you, my peace I give you, look not on our sins, but on the faith of your church, and graciously grant her peace and unity in accordance with your will, who live and reign forever and ever. Amen. The peace of the Lord be always with you. And with your spirit. Lamb of God, you take, take away the sins of the world. world. Have mercy on us. Lamb of God, you take away the sins of the world. Have mercy on us. Lamb of God, you take away the sins of the world. Behold the Lamb of God. Behold him who takes away the sins of the world. Blessed are those called to the supper of the Lamb. Lord, I am not worthy that you should enter under my roof. But only to say the word, and my soul shall be healed. of spiritual communion for those who are joining us from home. My Jesus, I believe that you are present in the most holy sacrament. I love you above all things, and I desire to receive you into my soul. Since I cannot at this moment receive you sacramentally, come at least spiritually into my heart. I embrace you as if you were already there and unite myself wholly to you. Never permit me to be separated from you. Amen. 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 Let us pray. As we receive these glorious mysteries, we make thanksgiving to you, O Lord, for allowing us, while still on earth, to be partakers, even now, of the things of heaven, through Christ our Lord. Amen. I believe we still have some more missiles for the Lenten season on the table. Feel free to take one home. We also ask that if you do uh, frequent using the missiles that we offer, that uh, you please recycle them at your home. I guess some people have been bringing them back, and so Father Bruce wanted us to ask you if you could recycle it at home. <laughs> the Lord be with you. And with your spirit. May Almighty God bless you, the Father, the Son, and the Holy Spirit. Amen. Go in peace, glorifying the Lord by your life. Amen. Amen.